The last Marxist mascot, Jyoti Basu, was also India's longest-serving chief minister and the longest-serving elected leader. Unlike communist heads elsewhere, Basu stepped down from office willingly after 24 long years in power. Often described as a Fabian socialist rather than an orthodox communist, Basu worked by consensus. Successfully managing coalitions, he looked less and less a communist and more and more a pragmatist. Jyoti Basu's success could have been greater but for what he would later describe as an historic blunder. In 1996, the Central Committee of Basu's party voted against a proposal to allow him to become Prime Minister of India. As head of West Bengal, Basu's government achieved much. He restored political stability in a state racked by the Naxalite movement and made land reforms a reality. But there were many failures as well. His government could not control the militant trade unions, rejuvenate industry or encourage foreign investment. Jyoti Basu was 64 when he became the chief minister in 1977. A skilled practitioner of real politics and a graduate of the London School of Economics, Basu's radicalism began early. Born on July 8, 1914 in Calcutta to upper middle class parents, he was initiated into communism in the United Kingdom. Basu returned to India in 1940 and became a member of the Communist Party of India. When the Communist Party was divided in 1964, he became one of the first nine members of the Politburo. He was elected to the West Bengal Assembly in 1952, a feat that he would repeat ten more times. Many find Jyoti Basu's iconic status in Indian politics a bit of an anachronism. But then, as a political analyst puts it, the 95-year-old Jyoti Basu made communism look respectable and workable.